uh, two hours or an hour and a half off the charge so far. Let's have a look, see how we're getting on. Hi, I'm Gareth, and I've just spent a week with the Samsung Gear S3. It's got a few big upgrades from the Gear S2. Same circular bezel, but it's got GPS, a longer battery life, and a slightly bigger and better screen. I spent a week with it to see what it was really all about, so you can find out just how good it really is. Hello YouTube, it's Gareth here, and following the success of John Porter's Weeks With, I was like, well, I want to do one of those and see if I can do it better. I've just spent about, I'd say, about two minutes setting up. If you've got a Samsung phone, you get the Gear app straight on it, and it's literally a case of tapping the two together. If you've got a different phone, for instance, as in on Android, you can do the same thing. You can download Gear. You do have to download a few more different apps, but ultimately, it's not too bad. It works quite nicely. One of the things that I find the most annoying is if I'm walking along and I want to change music and, and I want to see what I'm playing and all these kind of things, you want to have that ability. You just swipe along, and there, you've got your music playing app. So you can choose between music source on the phone and music source on the watch. You transfer tracks from the apps and they go straight across to the phone. You don't have to do any sort of annoying, annoying syncing or anything like that. It works quite nicely. Sound down. Let's pop it up. So usually you'd actually do this with uh, Bluetooth headphones because ultimately who wants to listen to music like this. But that's, that's quite a loud speaker. I'm in a quiet room right now, but that's actually fairly decent. Morning, it's park run day today, which means it's time to go and run around a field for five kilometers and then finish and hopefully finish as fast as you can. Without any kind of dedicated running apps that I can find so far, like uh, Night Plus or anything like that, which is supposed to be there, but doesn't seem to be. I'm not sure it's actually that good for running. Right, here we go. I'm probably a bit late, so I should probably start warming up. See you in a bit. Came second, which, yeah, came second. Well, at first, but uh, I think I was so fast in front. Anyway. We should hit a mile there. So if you can hear this. She talks like this when you're running and it's very, very difficult to actually hear what she's saying. But as you can see, so you've got very little information on the screen. You've got distance, and you scroll and you can see calories, and you can see your pace. And, and while obviously these are bright and it's easy to see, again, you can't customize it to have say more, I mean, it's a big screen. You should be able to have more than one on there at once. There's an app on the phone so that you can arrange them exactly how you want them to. So if you wanted to say, right, I want to see, I want to know that my pace is next to my distance or next to my heart rate in a bigger screen. You can see that and swipe across and know exactly where you're going to be. But right now you have to learn what it is. The heart rate, by the way, is terrible. The heart rate on this thing is just, I mean, I thought the Apple Watch 2 was bad, but this is, it, it, it catches, what it does is it catches your cadence. So when you're bouncing along, it will actually read that as your heart rate rather than be able to catch your pulse. Dedicated watch companies like Garmin, like Mio sometimes as well with some different watches when they're designed in the right way, will actually make it really easy to catch that. So. Samsung needs to improve this a lot. It needs to just have running apps on. Yeah, it does enough. It'll, it'll track what I do. It'll tell me how far I've gone. It'll, you know, it'll tell me my speed generally. I don't mind this as a running watch, but it wouldn't be my favorite one, I think, is what I feel so far. One thing is really sticking out is this thing has so few apps. I mean, having used an Apple Watch 2 for a little bit, at least Apple has got an ecosystem lying around it. Even though there's myriad problems with the Apple Watch 2 in certain ways, but at least there's certain things you can do with it. And I've been downloading sort of all the main apps that I could find really for me. I mean, in terms of things that are there, um, things that I'd actually bother to download, I mean, Uber's there, uh, there's a Golf Navi app, there's a few, I don't know, they're sort of tiny workout apps, but they're no-name brands. And for the, the, what was supposed to be happening here is we're supposed to have Spotify. We were supposed to have uh, Spotify, Night Plus, uh, iHeartRadio, but mostly what you've got is games. So, for instance, here you've got Gear Pong, You've got Fruit Ninja that exists on the phone. Now this is the Apple Watch, and I know this is slightly irrelevant because ultimately, you know, it's the Apple Watch, it's the Galaxy, the Gear S3, and then you can't really work on the same operating system. But if you just look at the amount of apps that you've got available in the Apple Watch, you've got Google Maps, you've got Under Armour, you've got uh, Map My Fitness, uh, Amazon, Instagram, uh, Apodo, there's, there's so many on there, you know, swim.com, there's so many on there that are automatically available just by downloading the apps from the Apple App Store, whereas with Samsung you have to use Samsung's apps rather than Google Play. It makes it very difficult, there's just such a more rich ecosystem on the Apple Watch 2. Okay, so today I've just been out uh, running, obstacle course training, I'm quite tired. What I need to do now though is do my strength work. So today I want to try out another feature of the Gear S3 which is the ability to do tracking of reps, say squats and lunges and, and star jumps and crunches and all that kind of stuff. 
In theory, this should sit on your wrist uh, and it will be able to tell me exactly how many I've done, tell me when to rest, tell me when to go again. I think so, I'm gonna start off with star jumps. Ready? Now what? It's Tim, it's my cat Tim. Say that. Look, it's my other cat B, it's my other cat Daisy. She doesn't like being picked up very much, so I'm gonna put it down now. It's just told me that my ex it could not detect exercise ready posture. Tell me to get in position to start workout and I'm I'll start again. Oh, here we go. Okay, and we're off. As you can see there, we've got a slight issue. So <coughs> it says here take a rest. So you're supposed to do 10 of these, but I actually ended up doing about, I don't know, 18 there. Um, and when I got to 10, the watch didn't do anything to buzz and tell me. So that's fairly annoying. We'll keep going. I don't know what that, there's, there's a little then, there's a voice there telling me that I reached my target and that was really good. That's actually really handy. So, yeah, I can share it to Facebook and really brag and annoy all my friends. Get the, uh, get the squats out of the way. All right, so that was a lot better. That was 10. And clearly this sort of up and down motion is really much easier to track for the watch because that was perfect. Eight calories, is that it? I'm really tired. Yeah, I've done, done two and that was six. And that, that counted as well apparently. Right, I'm giving up on crunches. They're not working. But I'm gonna go down again, see if it maybe reset the accelerometer. But... It's a mixed bag. Star jumps, useless. Squats, very good. Same with lunges, a little bit iffy, but generally quite good. Crunches, just rubbish. This, this motion, but there's no training in there. There's nothing that tells me I should be doing a little bit better or I should be trying this or tomorrow. Let's try and do 15 of them or anything, any kind of progression or anything. It just, it monitors you. It's the Gear S3 battery test today. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Look at it in different times of the day. Tell you what I've been doing with it and see how well the battery is working. So just have me cycling to work and cycle around for 11 minutes. Well, apparently it thinks I'm still cycling. As, is it going to stop? Clearly not cycling anymore, what? Let's be honest. That's happening. While we're here, let's take a look at the battery. So after 15 minutes or so of charge, still at 100%. Just had something fun happen there. Uh, just spent the last 15 minutes trying to get a bike lock open because it had frozen shut. And in all the wiggling, I managed to get a dynamic workout of 11 minutes. Uh, two hours or an hour and a half off the charge so far. Let's have a look, see how we're getting on. There we go. We are at 100% still. Right, it's now quarter past 12, so the watch has been off charge for four hours, so we can take a look and see how the battery is getting on. So you can see there, there's 97% of the battery left. Okay, just been for uh, about an hour's worth of running. Uh, what time is it now? It's 10 to four, so the watch has been going for, get your maths out, Gareth, eight and a half hours, pretty much. So let's take a look and see how we're doing battery-wise. There we see, 83%, so 17% in eight and a half hours. Been for run, GPS was on, screen was uh, pumping at half brightness. So not too bad so far. Here we go, end of the day, 11.49. We've been on for a lot of hours. Pop on the charge, see how we're doing battery wise. There you go, 66% remaining, not too bad. So today was the big long battery test with the Gear S3. I was running for 31 miles or 50K with my running crew, testing it against the Apple Watch Series 2 and the proper running watch Garmin 4 Runner 735 XT. You can check out how that went in the top right hand corner where we did a full video to check out how it performed. So that was a week with the Gear S3 and there are some issues, I'll be honest. I mean, there's lots of really good bits. The, uh, the GPS have, being on board is really useful. I started to get used to the circular bezel for moving through different things and the screen is really nice and clear. There are lots of really good features about this, but there are some other things that I just feel like it didn't quite do well enough. Like, for instance, the GPS being on there is good, it's just too simplistic and it's not as accurate as I'd need it to be. But the real thing for me is there aren't enough apps. I mean, you look at the Apple Watch Series 2 and it's got just loads out there and even that's not really enough. You know, obviously phones, loads of apps everywhere and that's what makes them smartphones. This is a smartwatch that just does Samsung stuff really. Uh, and while if you're into Samsung and you've got money's no object, that'd be fine, but money is an object. And this is a very expensive smartwatch. It's over 300 pounds in the UK, way more in different territories. And that's something you really need to consider. It doesn't do enough, at least with the Apple Watch too, it, do, it does some stuff. I know you can't buy the two together, but 
Ultimately, Samsung needs to improve the app ecosystem, maybe refine some of the tracking, that kind of thing, and then it would have a really big, really sort of hit-worthy smartwatch on its hands. And as ever, we love you, YouTube, and we want to see more of you. We want you to like, we want you to subscribe, and we really want you to comment below. I've just laid out my life bare, and you can tell me just how bad it really is. I mean, how messy is my house? How much do you like my cats? These are key things we need to know. Let us know in the comments below, and as ever, I'll see you again soon.